It's time for Around the Ozark Sports Scene, brought to you by Fast Break Sports, the largest selection of cards and card supplies in southwest Missouri. Now here's your host, Scott Perrier. Welcome in to another edition of Around the Ozark Sports Scene. I am Scott Perrier. As always, uh, my pleasure to have you join me for this podcast each week, talk a little sports, and this week it's our favorite golf week of the year, the Price Cutter Charity Championship, and Joining me today is Byron Shive, the executive director of the tournament. Uh, Byron, thanks for uh, chiming in with us. Hey, Scott, it's good to hear from you, and I appreciate the opportunity to be on. You betcha. Well, I know it's a, a busy week for you. What What's the over-under on hours of sleep between Monday through Sunday for you? <laughs> well, I, I, another good bet would be uh, over-under on the amount of caffeine in, in, intake. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, definitely a lot of early mornings and, and late nights, but um, it, it is uh, – one of our favorite weeks of the year. Uh, it, it's, it's exciting. It's an annual tradition in the Ozarks, of course, but uh, especially this year, we've been uh, working on some changes for the tournament, and um, you know, with uh, with you know, with the build and the skyboxes and location of different things, and we're excited to unveil that here in a few days. Now, is this your second solo venture with this tournament? That, that, yes, sir. Uh, I have been with the Hall of Fame and the tournament since uh, twenty one was my first uh, tournament. Uh, there under Gerald Andrews, of course, and, um, and after the second tournament under him, he stepped aside and I took the reins. So last year, yes, was my first uh, first solo. How do things feel different for you this tournament, uh, you know, compared to last year? Well, it's it's uh, basically last year we started, you know, kind of implementing some new things. But um, since last year, we've, we've visited other tournaments on the Corn Ferry Tour. We've been to the tour meetings. Um, Last year, our, our executive vice president, Kerry Norris, and our director of operations, Taylor Frederick, actually attended the PGA Tour meetings in December with me. They got to go for the first time. And just bouncing ideas off of other tournaments and you know, finding out what they do and don't do. And so we've implemented a lot of changes, uh, added some events. We just had uh, the other night a uh, junior golf challenge, the Corn Ferry Tour, feature grades, great features of junior golf challenge for the first time where we paired up junior golfers with actual court ferry tour players and they played you know one-on-one alternate shot at highland springs with uh, under you know so that was uh, a massive hit to, you know just uh, all the to see the smiles on the kids faces i asked them if they had a good time and they were all just beaming with smiles so that was just one example but the biggest change uh, for those that have been uh, coming to the tournament you know for a while is the location of the uh, ozarks club tent uh, the sgc food service ozarks club vip hospitality venue has always been in the parking lot so you had to leave the action to go eat lunch or get we've actually relocated that to the golf course if there's a structure it's actually you're not even going to recognize it's not even a tent anymore uh, but it's located in between holes 12 and 18 and so it's right there right off the car path behind the 18 skyboxes with a outstanding view out the back deck you can sit out there and watch the tee shots on 12 as you eat lunch um, uh, so that's that's one massive change, and then of course the skyboxes themselves uh, got a complete overhaul. They've uh, pretty much been covered grandstands uh, for the most part. Uh, we've upgraded those; they're more like a suite now. Uh, they, to be honest with you, turned out way better than I even had hoped they would. And so we're excited to unveil that. They've got uh, uh, each one of them has a lounge uh, in, in them that, that's going to be serving drinks and hors d'oeuvres, and just a lot of changes coming to the tournament. Well, for those who are listening and maybe aren't familiar with the the Price Cutter Charity Championship, it's a 72-hole tournament at Highland Springs Country Club uh, on the Corn Ferry Tour. The Corn Ferry Tour is basically the minor league of the PGA Tour where you've got guys that are trying to get their card to get back out on the big tour and the big purses out there and and, uh, probably a field of around 150 golfers maybe this weekend. Is that close? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, probably maybe even closer to 160. Uh, we'll we'll be in the field. They'll play uh, uh, both. Everybody plays two rounds on uh, Thursday and Friday. They they play in the morning on Thursday. It's the off. They'll play afternoon Friday, and vice versa. At the end of uh, play on Friday, they'll have the cut, and that's the top. Uh, I believe it's 60 plus or top 56 plus ties. So you'll wind up with you know 60 some golfers probably on the weekend. Uh, and, and then, of course, you know the 72 holes. Um, it's you mentioned it's the minor league of golf. That's probably an act. That's probably how I would describe it as well. Uh, but that doesn't. I mean, these guys are really good. Uh, oh yeah. We've got, uh, for example, last year's champion Pearson Cootie 
actually finished runner-up on Sunday on the tour and probably should have won the tournament, had a two-stroke lead on Sunday, but that was last year's Price Cutter Charity Championship uh, winner was almost win winning a tournament on the tour. And so uh, we've got Max McGreevy, he's a former winner, coming in here hot. He's, I think, number two in the points. Uh, so there's just a, a really strong strong uh, feel, a lot of up-and-comers. It, it's kind of funny that you know, the, the PGA has what they call the truck. It's kind of their op center that comes to every tournament. And on the side, both sides of the semi are painted like all of these uh, past Corn Ferry Tour alums, names that people are going to know. Scotty Scheffler, who's probably the hottest golfer on the planet right now, has played right here in Springfield. Wyndham Clark is going to the Olympics representing the United States. He played here uh, in Springfield. So guys like that, you know, it's the future of the tour. So it's a great, great opportunity to come out, have a great time, but also see the future stars of the PGA Tour. Yeah, and I, I was fortunate enough as a golf writer at the newsletter to cover the first 15, uh, dating back to 1990, and, and uh, when Payne Stewart made an appearance there as, yeah. as the local guy. And and uh, were, were you able to go to some of the early ones? Were, were you in the I know you're a, a Bolivar native, correct? Well, I'm, I'm, I live in Bolivar. I married a Bolivar girl. That's right, yeah. Moved here, moved here in 04, but I was attending the tournament probably about 2000 when we started dating you in that late 90s. So I was yeah, and I, uh, you know, you talk about the quality of these guys. Uh, doing a little research, uh, Cristobal Del Solar, who won last yeah. week in Colorado, is Mr. 57. He's the only guy in a yeah. sanctioned yeah. PGA Tour event to shoot a 57. He did it in Columbia, not Missouri, but the country, at a Corn Ferry <laughs> Tour event back in February. So you got a guy that That's shot a 57. That ought to tell you how good the players are out on this tour. I, I've shot 57 as well and <laughs> then made the turn. But, uh, yeah, that's beyond impressive to, to do that at any level, but especially, uh, you know, under the conditions that these guys play in. Yeah, uh, you know, and that 57 is a good number for all your pro-am people to shoot for uh, to get in the money because I know you That's right. You got a few of those. and You're on your way back as we tape this from Branson from the uh, per, uh, uh, pro-am at, at uh, Buffalo Ridge. I believe, is that Silver Dollar City? Yes, it is. The Silver Dollar yeah. City Pro Am, and uh, of course, tomorrow is the. Uh, you know, as we're taping this, tomorrow Wednesday is the official Wednesday Pro Am, the Price Cutter Pro Am, and, and we've got 52 teams ready to go out tomorrow. But um, this is uh, every PGA or every Corn Ferry Tour event has the official Wednesday Pro Am. A few of them will have a Monday Pro Am, and then there's the Price Cutter Charity Championship. We have, I think, 10 playing opportunities that are spread throughout the year. We have the Cardinals Classic back in June all the way uh, to the Children's Smile Center Poker Run Golf Classic in October. So there's 10 different opportunities associated with the tournament. So that's kind of our, our niche on the Corn Ferry Tour when we get to the meetings. They can't believe that we have 10 different tournaments. So. You know, I had uh, Phil Steele on last week, the college football uh, yeah, magazine oh, writer. Yeah. And uh, he, he's just amazing with the names and numbers he remembers. But I would like to get you and Phil in a standoff, and you you rattle off all the sponsors and what they're sponsoring for uh, for this week and leading up to it because that that's uh, this thing doesn't happen without the, all those people like Price Cutter and you know they've been absolutely. with you I think since uh, what for twenty seven years About or something twenty twenty six yeah absolutely yeah uh, every and every small obviously they're the largest sponsor and we can't can't do it without their support and it's not just financial I mean you talk about these programs and, and different golf tournaments. Price cutters donating the, the lunch for, for the bulk of them. They're donating the food during the week of the tournament. They just do so much uh, in, in that in that way, in addition to the financial support. And so, you know, but it's not just the large ones. Every little, you know, twenty five dollar TLC sweepstakes ticket that someone buys is also going directly to the charities. So it, it does take all of them. Uh, uh, you know, it, like I say, from the largest to the smallest and all in between. But there's so much support. You know, even in the economy we're in, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, the inflation and different things. There's there's been businesses, to be honest with you, that have had to take a step back this year because of things, you know, and they felt bad about it. But you know, we've had others step up, so it it, it always works itself out. And just can't couldn't thank thank these uh, sponsors enough for their support uh, and our volunteers. You know, it, it takes an army to put on a tournament like this, and um, so it's you know, we're probably 800 to a thousand strong with just volunteers and. You know, and it's not, you know, just the, the walking scores and those that are out front, but, you know, we have people taking the trash out each day. We have people that are 
packing uh, program packs, just you know, from the largest to the smallest job and everything in between. We just couldn't do it without them and just want to thank each one of them. And, of course, the bottom line is the bottom line. This event has raised more than $20 million for local charities. Uh, I remember back when it started, there were two or three uh, or four maybe charities, originals. How many now benefit from the tournament? Uh, there's 48 charities this year that will benefit directly from the tournament. Um, the number, since I've been involved in the last four years, is always in that low 50s, high 40s uh, you know, range. Of each year there will be a couple that, have to, that will not continue for whatever reason, and there's always a couple of new ones, so it always uh, kind of works itself out. But this year there are 48 charities, and uh, we look forward. It will be November, I believe, 19th at the celebration of sharing which is our favorite day of the year. It's when all the, the hard work, and the, we mentioned the early mornings and late nights. That's, that's a payday for us because we get to hand out the checks to these charities and um, just excited to be able to help. Well, apparently the golf gods are smiling on Byron Shy because outside of tomorrow, the weather looks perfect for the four days of the tournament. Um, that's what uh, yeah. we got the official, uh, the PGA Tour has their own meteorologist and technology that they bring to every tournament. They sent out the forecast this morning and it, it could not possibly be better we do have a chance for some rain for the price cutter pro-am but the actual tournament thursday to sunday i think the highs are in the low to mid 80s in july in the ozarks i'll take that every day oh absolutely i remember days when caddies were throwing up and players were throwing up from heat stroke and all that yeah. it's gonna be hard to get that in the low 80s you know but uh oh. knock on wood so Take us through a Thursday, Friday ticket situation. I know you got some special things going Saturday and Sunday we'll talk about as well. Yeah, and it is. That, that's another change this year. Uh, for, for, I imagine, the first 24 or 34 years of the tournament, there's been four-day badges that get you in. If you have a ticket, it's good for all four days. The only four-day badges this year are the ultimate sponsorship, and then if you've purchased a TLC sweepstakes, uh, that will get you on the grounds all four days. But all other badges are single day. Um, they're good for a single day at the tournament. Um, we made this switch based on consultation with other tournaments, and um, it gives people the opportunity in the past. If you had, you know, ten of these four day badges, then uh, you got ten people in. But if you had forty people that wanted to go a single day, then you it, it wouldn't allow you to do that. And so it allows for more flexibility. So that's one big change. But uh, we do have uh, tickets available, badges for the Ozarks Club uh, available as well. You can call. The Hall of Fame uh, at 887-3400 and get to get those. But special days, oh, Friday, everybody gets it free on Friday, courtesy of Oak Star Bank. Uh, they've done this for a few years now. We appreciate their support, but they're basically paying for whoever wants to go to, to the tournament on Friday. So we encourage you to come out uh, free of charge uh, to the tournament on Friday, courtesy of Oak Star Bank. And then Saturday, Sunday, you mentioned we do have some special days. Sunday's the traditional uh Go Blue for Autism, uh, by the, uh, supported by the Ark of the Ozarks. Encourage all golf fans to wear blue to the tournament uh, in support of this great cause uh, for Championship Sunday. And then Saturday, for the first time, we are uh, hosting Military Appreciation Day. Uh, this is the first time we've done it. There'll be some special ceremonies actually kickstarting the day in the morning, around 6:30 or so, prior to the first professional tea time, which should be about seven o'clock. Uh, we've got special ceremonies with uh, color guard. There's buglers bagpiper and they're going to have the national anthem sung by a veteran got some ceremonial tee shots by uh one of the most decorated uh, fighter pilots uh, uh in in the nation's history uh, greg mcmanus from here locally in springfield as well as governor mike parson will be on hand to hit some ceremonial first tee shots uh that morning throughout the day of course uh, we'll have static military displays uh, along the number nine uh, fairway that folks can take a look at get their photos made with there'll be military personnel from all branches on hand and we're working uh, on getting a flyover uh, as you might imagine that requires a lot of red tape that is uh you have to ask in advance and fortunately for us we know a few people that, that might be able to pull some strings but we're working on that but excited for military appreciation day as well and that's thompson sales correct yeah thompson sales is supporting that they've uh, they've uh, stepped up big this year as a supporter and uh, just doing a lot of different things, including honoring our heroes and, and some other events as well. But just one of our many sponsors that we are grateful for. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? 
they're also playing Chumba Casino. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino's home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. And, you know, there's all in the past, and I think they still do this, but do the, the actual host sites get a sponsor's exemption or two? Have you awarded those? Yeah, so we get um, a pair of unrestricted exemptions that we pretty much, I will say that we can give them to anyone. Uh, you have to have some skill, but uh, those have been awarded uh, to Carr Vernon. He's uh, uh, from Poplar Bluff. Um, uh, most people know that the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame manages the Price Cutter Charity Championship, and uh, the Poplar Bluff Golf Program has actually been inducted into the Hall of Fame. And so, Carr Vernon is actually technically a member of the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, but he's uh, very talented. He uh, competes on the, uh, the Canadian Tour uh, full-time, and uh, so he's got one of the exemptions. The other is a local product, uh, Joey Johnson. Uh, he's a two-time Missouri Amateur Champion, uh, uh, played at Missouri State for a year, and uh, currently is uh, works at Clear Creek. Uh, he's a, a kind of an executive or salesperson down at the Clear Creek Golf Carts in uh, Ozark, and so we're excited for Joey to get a chance to come out and and show his skills this year at the tournament. And then we get a couple of um, restricted exemptions. These are players with uh, Corn Ferry Tour status. There's a list of about 100 that the tour provides us. So to be honest with you, that, that list, our, our, our guys we chose, uh, Tag Ridings and um, I can't even remember, Josh Creel were the two that we chose originally, and they actually made it into the tournament. They were alternates and actually made it into the tournament. So um, I'm not to be honest with you, as we're you know, recording this, I'm not even sure who the the two of the replacements have been. So, but we are excited for those guys as well. And open qual are the uh, open qualifying was what? Yeah, Monday at Millwood again. Yeah, I believe that they competed at Millwood and R- River Cut yesterday okay. on Monday, and um, I believe there were seven or eight that made it in, including, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the guy that won it at Millwood shot like a 61. Wow! And broke. It broke Payne Stewart's uh, course record at Millwood. If I, that's what I was told. Now that's I haven't verified that personally, but that is what I was told that uh, the, that the guy broke uh, Payne Stewart's uh, course record at Millwood. You know, there, there's a lot of change going on right now in the world of golf. You know, the the Live Tour, and then there's talk of the merger. And, and matter of fact, I'm reading a yeah. book on the whole thing, how it came about. But then I see news in the last few days that there there's a lot of talk about changes starting in 26 and. One of them that the PGA Tour players have mentioned is cutting down the number of guys that actually play out on the PGA Tour. I guess that could be both good and bad for the Corn Ferry because it means that on the good side, you're going to have a much more competitive Corn Ferry group of guys every event that are, that are trying to get in, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then on top of that, uh, which you're going to have some guys that people know, that yeah. they've heard of that are coming back down because of the limited number on the PGA Tour. And so uh, even on a smaller note, last year, uh, uh, Camilo, Camilo uh, what is it? V- Viegas? Viegas? Yeah. Viegas, that's it. Yeah. He actually played in, in the tournament last year and you know, had name recognition. You know, We've had uh, you know guys like that that have played up and have come down. So, uh, yeah, if they limit the number of PGA Tour spots each week, it's certainly going to, you know, force some guys to go back down to the Corn Ferry Tour, and I think some of these guys are going to be names that, that you know, people coming out, the everyday fans that have, have heard of, which certainly helps us at the tournament in terms of ticket sales and, and attendance. Well, I know that uh, in the past with Gerald and, and his predecessors that, you know, the heavy lifting for all you guys was up till they teed it off on Thursday morning. That, that was kind of a time for you to kind of – yeah. Put out, put out fires, and maybe start thinking about what can I change for next year. Do those uh, gerbils start turning the wheel then on Thursday? That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> I mean, I'm right now. I'm thinking about what still has to be put up and what sign goes where tonight. But if you're right. When Thursday gets here, the, the morning of Thursday until about noon, it is chaotic. There's some fires, some opening day, get this and do that. But once we get to about noon on Thursday until about you know, noon on Sunday, it's kind of just ride around and stay out of the PG, you know, stay out of the Corn Ferry Tour way in terms of the, and, and just uh, kind of have some fun and, and relax. But, but you are right. It, it's never over. We're looking ahead to next year and, 
you know, even though we've got some changes this year, how can we make it better going into next year? So. I think the coolest thing maybe of all is that uh, the Price Cutter Cherry Championship in Highland Springs remains one of only four venues uh, that have hosted every year since uh, the tour started as the Ben Hogan Tour in 1990. Yeah. Uh, that that only happens with a respect from the PGA Tour slash Corn Ferry for uh, Corn Ter- yeah. Corn Ferry Tour for what you yeah. guys do to continue on that relationship. But it's obviously got to be a good one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned we're one of the four original tour stops. I've been Knoxville, Wichita, and Boise are the other three, but we're one of only two, with Boise being the other, that have been played at the same golf course. You mentioned Highland Springs Country Club. They've been a great partner. Actually, officially this year, a lead sponsor. I think uh, fans coming out are going to see some acknowledgement of Highland Springs support over the years uh, through signage, and they've got their own uh, air-conditioned box this year, so kind of our nod of saying thank you to Highland Springs, but it has been a great relationship. Uh, you mentioned the Corn Ferry Tour, the Ben Hogan Tour. Of course, it's been the not Nike Tour and the Nationwide Tour and Buy.com and a lot of different names over the years, but one thing's remained constant, and that is uh, the support of the Springfield golf community and beyond, you know, coming out year after year, supporting the tournament, the sponsorships, the amount of charity dollars, it, it's certainly evident. When we go to the tour meetings, they cannot believe, I mentioned the pro they can't believe that we have 800 to 1,000 volunteers. I mean, they're struggling other tournaments to get 250 or 300. That's that's buy-in from the community. And so um, it's, it's just a, it's been a great relationship, great uh, opportunities here. And we are so thankful for the Ozarks golf community and the support they've given the tournament over the years. Well, I know along with the check presentation on the 18th green after it's all done Sunday night, you guys always give away something cool, too, and, and uh, via raffle. I think it's at a raffle. You ought to get the two people that can name all the sponsors of all the pro ams, <laughs> and then and then also name maybe the the past five winners or something like that. But what are you giving away this year, and, and how can people participate in that? Absolutely, we have uh, two raffles that will be uh, taking place uh, with the drawings on uh, Championship Sunday. Uh, the TLC Sweepstakes raffle. That's the twenty five dollar what they call truck tickets. Uh, this has been around for a long time. All the charities are selling these tickets. There's 10000 total for $25. Um, I mentioned the grounds pass earlier, get you into the tournament all four days. It also enters you into a daily drawing during the tournament. So Thursday through Sunday, there will be 125 daily drawings for prizes that are you know, $25 or more, so you're basically getting your a chance to get your money back there. Uh, in addition, all tickets are entered for two drawings on, on that Sunday. The first is for $10,000 cash. The second is for a brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma. So the charities will be selling these throughout the tournament all the way up until Sunday around noon. Uh, and then secondly is the Rick's Raffle, that's Rick's Automotive, the Rick's Raffle um, Luxury Mexican Home Giveaway. We're only selling 300 chances for $100 each on a seven-night stay at a luxury home overlooking the Pacific Ocean in Mexico, Manzanillo, Manzanillo Mexico. It has six luxury suites, uh, own personal chef, cleaning service each day, your own personal concierge. Um, I've had several that have been to the house said that it's ruined vacations for them. And so, you know, I encourage people to find five couples that you uh, can, can stand to spend a week with and uh, go in together and everybody buy a ticket. That uh, makes your odds one in 50 uh, instead of one in 300. But we'll draw that also on the, uh, on the, on the 18th grade on Championship Sunday. It's the Price Cutter Charity Championship, 72 holes starting on Thursday, continues through Sunday. It's part sports bar, part vendor village, part uh, luxury suites, part lots of parts of good golf, uh, and Byron Shive is, is running it now. Byron, I always appreciate your time. I know it's a busy week. Thanks for taking time to, to share the details with us. Scott, we appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate all you have done and continue to do. Uh, have a great week, Byron. All right. Thank you, Scott. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Around the Ozark Sports Scene. I'm Scott Purrier. As always, thank you for listening, and big thanks to Fast Break Sports, your home for all things sports cards, memorabilia, and Springfield. They're off of South Campbell. They're just south of Campbell and Battlefield, uh, maybe a few uh, hundred yards down from Burger King. Go see them. Get that man cave set up for football season. It's just around the corner, and all your needs for sports cards and collectibles, they've got it at Fast Break Sports. We'll see you next week on Around the Ozark Sports.
Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.